Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome to episode 18 of Network Chat Programming. Okay, so today we are going to talk about basically how to send different types of packets, okay? And these aren't going to be different types of packets in the sense that um, something's going to be, you know, really different in code, but the data that we send, we're actually going to prefix it with a certain identifier so that we can then say, oh, okay, cool, this is a, um, a connection packet, this is a disconnection packet, this is a whatever packet, okay? Um, so the idea is, just, just to help you guys uh, understand this, um, the idea is that we have, uh, we you know, as a client, as being the, the client side of this entire uh, program, we want to kind of, you know, send the server different types of packets. So the idea is if we send something like, hey man, that's going to be a message, right? But then what, what, what happens if we want to send the server a connection request? So we, we basically want to be like, okay, hey server, this is me, this is my IP address, I want you to add me to the array list here of clients, okay? How do we send a connection that says, yo server, what up? connect me. Okay, how do we send something like this? Well, we could actually send that and then match it and be like, okay, if the client says this connection. But more logically, we need somehow to differentiate it from just a simple message. And the way that we're going to do that is by using a forward slash. And then we're actually going to use whatever the hell letter we want, followed by another forward slash, followed by the actual message. Okay, so we're prefixing it with four slash C four slash. Okay, and C is going to stand for connection, right? For disconnection, we might use D, and for I don't know some kind of other information packet, we might use I. It doesn't matter what you use. You can use your you can use Cherno here. It doesn't matter because again, we're going to actually create this structure. So if we set it to C, let's start with that. That's going to be our connection packet. So after that, we might want to send. We don't need to send the port and the um and the address. Remember because that's going to be sent. Like the packet will know where it's coming from, so that's fine. But what we might want to do is like, I don't know, send a client ID or, some, or something um, and be like, you know, maybe this is our client ID, right? Um, and then that will actually send it send it through. So that, that's one way of doing it, okay? And we're going to talk about how we can do that today. So let's delete these comments and get back into our receive method, which is where we receive our packet. So once we've received our packet, we kind of want to process it. So what I like to do is make a, uh, a private method here called process along, along with our actual data. So string will be used, okay? Um, and then if we just hover our mouse over that, in fact, let's do it the slow way so you guys can see exactly what's going on. Um, so let's me just scroll this up a bit. So uh, private uh, void process string uh, message, I guess. We'll call it packet. All right, so this is going to process a packet of data. So essentially what we want to do here is, is we want to kind of have like a, you know, a bunch of if statements. So if, you know, if our packet here dot starts with, and that's the awesome, awesome thing about Java, like it has all these methods already inbuilt for you. Well, so do a lot of other languages, but anyway, so if packet starts with, you know, C, then we know it's a connection packet. So in that case, what we want to do, in fact, this is a bad way of doing it. Let's, uh, let's not send this through. Let's just send the packet through. So let's pop this down and we'll change this to a datagram packet and we will change this to be, oh, hang on. Okay. Where, where did the process method go? Packet, okay? And then all this stuff is what we used before, so we're gonna have to delete this uh, because it's no, no longer relevant. But um, nevertheless, process packet, okay? So this, this is what's gonna happen. Um, basically, uh, you know, we receive a packet, which is, you know, contained within a byte array of data, and we're just, we're forwarding that packet across to this process method, which is where we do everything. So like we get the, we get the bytes back into a string and so like that. So uh, if packet dot starts with if string now if string dot starts with c, then we can choose to do something. We can we can uh, basically you know as we had here as we had here clients dot add new server client yarn blah blah. blah. We can actually go ahead and said clients, oops, clients dot add new server client. Now the name this is important. This is one of the things that we want to send in the packet, okay? So I'll talk about that in, in a minute, but we basically need to put a name here. We also need uh, packet.get address is now actually just going to be packet.get address. 
and packet.get port. Um, and 50 was the ID. Okay, so we'll just... Oh, that's what we need to talk about. We'll do that next episode, okay? We'll talk about uh, unique identifiers because that's an important topic. Um, well, what am I doing that? <clears throat> okay, yeah? So we'll do something like this. Now, uh, this is a good point, actually, that just came up. And else, you know, if it's nothing else, if we because we only added C right now as a unique kind of identifier. Um, if it's anything else, then, you know... I guess um, it. I guess that it's just an actual method, uh, an actual message. So we could just print out string to the console, okay? Uh, just just to see what's going on. Right. So now that we uh, now that we have this unique identifier, what what we want to have here maybe is something like, okay, well, let's send uh, not only just a connection packet here, but let's also send the name of the client. That's a good idea, right? So what we can do then is, um, or I guess the best way to do this. It, it, it depends really how much data you have. You might want to have a bunch of data, you know, separated by dots. Um, it's really like the possibilities here are endless, guys. You're going to have to decide for yourselves what you want, what you don't want. But I think the only thing we need to send at the moment, and you guys let me know if you think of anything else, is probably just a name, right? The name and the fact that we do want to connect. Because the IP address and the port, which is the other two de details we need, are contained within the packet automatically. Because that's how the UDP protocol works. So um, we don't need to do that manually, luckily. Um, well, not luckily. I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to do it manually, but there's, it's just obviously just not necessary at all. So um, we've added a new client. Great. So let's grab the name. So the way we could do this is pretty... Uh, it's not too hard. So if we grab our string, which is our data here, and we could actually... Um, I think, yeah, if we go substring and begin index being uh, three probably... And end, and end index, obviously, being a string length, that would get the name. I'm pretty sure, okay? And obviously, I screwed this up. Oh, no, I didn't. I got it right. Okay, so this will hopefully work. Again, I'm not 100% sure because I don't know these string methods off by heart. But uh, we'll just print it out to the console so we can see, okay? So that's good. That should be good. So now we need to go back to our, our client, and not server client, but client. And when we actually do get this uh, send connection to get, to get bytes, what we need to do is, we've got this address and port stuff here, but all we need to do is really send name. And of course, oh, this brings this brings another little thing to the table, which I'm not going to talk about today. <laughs> but let's just send uh, C plus name, okay? Um, so that, that means it's a connection packet, and name is obviously just our name. So let's, uh, let's start up a server here by hitting, let me just bring up this console here. Let me just start up a server by hitting the debug button. Or actually, it's going to start at the login screen, which is good. And then we'll go to server main and start that as well to start our awesome server on port 8192. So yarn localhost 8192. Login. All right. Awesome. So it added it, obviously. And you can see here that it actually printed yarn, which was our name. So we did actually pass that string correctly. All right. So that's going to be uh, this episode of Network Chat Programming. If you guys did enjoy the episode, please hit the like button tomorrow or, well, tomorrow, I'm getting ahead of myself, next episode, which might or might not be tomorrow, depending on how many likes this video gets. By the way, 200 likes an episode tomorrow, or otherwise, I'm going to punish you guys and, no, I'm really just probably going to study for exams instead. But, um, now we'll talk about, uh, yeah, how to generate unique random numbers, because we need a unique random number here. Random.next in isn't going to cut it, because even though there is a minuscule, like, one in two billion chance of getting the same ID, it is still possible, so we want to kind of eliminate that. So we'll talk about uh, unique numbers next time, all right? Later, guys. Mm -hmm.